All right, what should we do next? Should we do a video react? Starting off in oh my God. No, not this woman again and it's 24. It's this lady again and it's 24 minutes long. All right, fine. Let's do another video react. Terrifying shark sightings that could be the Megalodon. Now featuring our new thing. Look, chat, you guys have a gray behind you now, an opaque gray, so people can actually see what you're typing. Say hello to YouTube, chat. Now you're, you're gonna see yourself on YouTube in the future for the first time. In our number 10 spot, we have the Zuyo Maru monster. This story is one that comes to us from 1977, and rather than an alive animal sighting, this one is actually this carcass that was found that we still aren't quite sure what it belongs to. The Zuyo Maru carcass was one that was found by Japanese- I feel like Japanese we do know. Didn't, don't we know? I feel like I heard the explanation on this and it was some kind of shark, but it just was decayed in a way that made this look like a neck and a head. I feel like we've seen this. In our number nine spot today, we have the sea creature. Back in both 1817 as well as 1819, there was a sea creature that visited the coast of Massachusetts and it was seen by hundreds of people, but no one has been able to identify what it could have been for sure. The creature was said to be around three feet in diameter and around 50 feet long. And it is said that it moved similarly to how a whale or a dolphin might. The first what? sighting of this creature was when some fishermen spotted it, but the real panic began as the creature started to show itself closer to shore. To this day, some people swear that this was some sort of real sea monster, and others believe it was just a case of mass hysteria. What do you think? In an 50 feet long swam like a whale, as in the up and down tail movement. Sightings that could be the Megalodon. What? Also, we're a minute in and we've gone through two already. How is this 24 minutes today, we long? We have the prehistoric monster. Back in 1959, a fisherman named Tex Geds and his friend, James Gavin, were boating somewhere just off of the coast of Scotland. It is said that during their time out to sea, they encountered a sea monster that neither of them had seen before. They described its head as being sort of turtle shaped and that it was a, quote, hellish monster of prehistoric times and said that it was breathing heavily through a, quote, large red gash of a mouth. Okay. Not exactly a turtle like large red gash of a mouth. Yeah, that sounds like a megalodon. Even if you wanted to do, uh, it just annoys me. I know, I know the titles don't ever match up with the video content, but it's just, I don't know. I've like one time in my entire career of YouTube re released a video that had a title that wasn't like entirely true, and I felt super bad about it. And these guys just like every video just like fucking make random videos about cryptids and just title them ridiculous shit that has nothing. She hasn't even said the word Megalodon at all so far. And she's on her third one in the video. I think it's important to bring up that we don't actually know what Megalodons look like. We have a oh, sort of idea, she just said but it at for the, the end first of the time. day, we only have- In our number seven spot today, we have Dr. Gru. When we- this is a screenshot for man eater. Of sea monsters and myths, we often think of the many serpent like creatures that just may be lurking underneath the water. This is definitely a common theme, and in the 17th century, there was a botanist who came up with a sort of explanation for these sea serpent sightings. It's important to note that this botanist was a very legitimate scientist who really. A 16th. 1600s botanist. This is the source of the terrifying shark sighting that could be the megalodon. A 17th century, in the 1600s, a botanist, a person who studies plants in the 1600s. Basically, he had this specimen, which was a sample of skin that he said was from some sort of I don't like how she seal, stares at me. But then it had a neck just as long as the Usually there's not a face in these videos, and I don't have to, like, look into someone's eyes. I feel like I'm socializing right now, and it's making me tired. Eye contact makes me tired. I'm just gonna look away. <laughs> of course, this would explain a whole bunch of sea monster sightings, but in the end, the skin sample ended up completely disappearing, making any confirmation of the story or the animal's existence completely impossible. I know a megalodon isn't necessarily supposed to look like a seal with a long neck, but who's to say for sure that it doesn't? In an um, basic genetic, phylogenetic research would say that it would not look like that. Teeth found would say that it would not look like that. It's, who's to say? Science?
Like every study ever done probably would say that, yeah. Number six spot today, we have the shipwreck. Back in 1909, the French steamer La Seine was out to sea when it collided with the British India steamer. Why are they all the so Onda. old? A shipwreck is in our number five spot today, we have the kayak encounter. Ida Parker and Kristen Orr were kayaking off of the coast of Plymouth in 2014. Holy when they shit, 2014, a it's a recent this is sighting. A nightmare scenario, and it must have been absolutely <laughs> terrifying. The pair, however, had actually set off with the intention of seeing a great white shark and while it's likely that this is exactly what they what encountered is that fin why is this the why is the fin triangular and go so far out what shark has a has a pectoral fin like this that's so weird it looks fake this looks like a a sea robin more than a Shark. Intention. While out there, however, the shark began to attack their kayaks. Okay, so In these the are just end, random both of them stock made it out footages. Alive, and when their kayaks were recovered, one was found with a huge bite mark in it. In our number four spot. Okay, so not one of those was an actual photo or video that involved a shark at all. Those were just literal stock images that this person found online. Nice. Today we have the oldest shark attack. This discovery came by way of a 3,000 year old human skeleton. That Bro, I didn't think they could get older than a 1600s botanist, but they're going th to 3000 BC. <laughs> Because of the time it's been, we obviously don't know what creature was involved in this attack for sure, but with the mass amount of wounds found on the skeleton, it was likely to be something large and terrifying. In our number three spot today, we have snorkeling. Robert- I, Someone had bite marks on them 3,000 years ago. We found their skeleton with some bite marks on it. Megalodon. What is going on? Hamperin and a friend, Gerald Lair, were snorkeling off of La Jolla Cave in California in 1959 when Robert was attacked by a shark. It is said to have all happened quite quickly and Gerald was alerted to the distress when he heard Robert scream. Gerald turned and saw Robert unusually high We in haven't the water. seen a single photo or video. She's just describing things that have happened. She's giving no evidence. She's just like telling stories. This is like a gather around the campfire and listen to the megalodon stories. And his mask was missing. Yeah, At these are just point, stock Gerald footages. Under in our number two spot today, we have the Jersey Shore. Back in 1916, during the summer season, there were five 16. different shark attacks that occurred over the span of 10 days that ended up in the deaths of four people. This wasn't something that had been seen before in the area, which of course left people speculating as to why. There this is the history of Jaws, the area right? During the time, which likely led to more people being out enjoying summertime sort Jesus of Jesus fucking Christ. Look at how many people are in the water there. Imagine being a shark in that area. Being a creature that uses its mouth to investigate things and gets curious and there's that many people in the water. It seems like extremely reasonable. Oh yeah, and dirty ass water too activities and maybe this attracted the shark but in the end no one knows for sure because no one even knows what kind of shark is responsible for the attacks in the first place luckily this didn't go on to become a continuous trend and whatever shark this was yeah it didn't go on to become a continuous trend it just created the jaws movies which created shark fear and hatred for the rest of humanity's existence on its merry way or perhaps found another food source or whatever but this series of attacks definitely kept the public on edge for the weeks and months surrounding in our number one spot today how are we at number one there are fucking 13, 14 wait there are 16 minutes left in this video is the number one 16 minutes long what is this of the uss indianapolis also none of these have been about the megalodon at all she's just describing shark attacks over the next five days nearly 600 men lost their lives due to shark attacks this is exactly why this has gone on to be called one of the worst shark attacks in history starting off in our number 10 Tigers. spot we have the TikTok shark it's a what? long time butterfly it went back to t it went back to 10 we went from 10 down to one and then back to 10 in May of last year, someone on TikTok called Alex Albrecht, who is a marine biodiversity student as well as a musician, shared a video on the app that okay. had people seriously shocked. The TikTok shows a massive shark lurking around the ship that Just Alex was Just a normal on, ass basking which is shark. Said to have, was this an actual megalodon? Likely not, but hey, I'm not the marine life student here, so who am I to say? In our number nine <laughs> spot today, we have the Oh, na fishing. now it's outside of your range to comment. I love these videos because they like clickbait so hard, put a bunch of like false and weird and misleading information, but then they're like, but hey, 
That's just my opinion. All right, I'm done with this video. I'm over this video. I do not need to watch a compilation of three different lists. Whoa.